So we have arrived in the Alpujarras. This is a, a region of Spain that Yoli and I have long wanted to visit. It's so rich in history. The culture is fascinating. Um, there's great food, great ham. We're in the Sierra Nevada Mountains, which is in Andalusia in southern Spain. And we're a little bit south of Granada. This is a, an area that's featured in literature. And we're going to explore the beautiful white villages that are tucked into these mountain ranges. Uh, we're going to walk. We're going to eat. We're going to drink. Everything that we love. So one of the great things about being in this uh, in these villages as you can walk between the villages. We're about to walk from Bubion to, to Pampaneira, which is a, a beautiful village just below us where we're going to have lunch. So we've been told we have to walk to the church and then there's a path. Um, no doubt we'll get lost. <laughs> yeah. So the winding streets of these towns reflect the fact that they were first built by, by Berbers, people from North Africa that came in the 8th century uh, to, this, to this region and settled here when the Moors invaded Spain in the 8th century. And so the villages are, are white villages, uh, they have traditional houses that are like the houses of North Africa with these big flat rooftop areas that, that create surface area because you don't have it because effectively you're living on a hill. And so there are small winding streets uh, and just beautiful views views of, of the hills around us, the snow-covered hills, really, really gorgeous. And of course, given the history of this area, the church right behind us was once where the mosque was. And when the Christians arrived and claimed this area, they just put the, probably originally converted the mosque into a church. Uh, why rebuild? Uh, but at some point rebuilt it uh, into, a, into a church. So here in Bubion, there's a, a little museum, which is a house museum, a 16th century home that was lived in by a family until 15, 20 years ago. And you can explore it and see what the houses were like and still are in some ways in this area, upstairs, downstairs, where the animal lived, where the wine was made, where, where, where you know, everything, uh, really, really interesting. You can hear water constantly in the Alpujarras uh, because the snow melts, the water comes from the mountains and they run down. And one of the things that the Moors uh, in introduced here was irrigation systems because you've got to capture that water to use it. So this area is also uh, known for its castañas or chestnuts and it's chestnut season. Um, so we're walking past this chestnut tree that is possibly hundreds of years old. I don't know how to open this. It's prickly. <laughs> Maybe bite into it? It's prickly. <laughs> Um, anyone out there? I feel very urban right now. Beautiful chestnut tree with these chestnuts, and I don't know. How you just need to get in there, like there's it's a... like a yeah. <laughs> no. One thing you'll see uh, in these villages are really colorful rugs for sale and they're a tradition here they're called jarapas they're made and have been made for centuries from the remains of old clothes and things like that so back 500 years ago people well, 200 years 100 years ago people would take old clothes of course you wouldn't throw them out you had to make do with everything that, that you had around you so you would you would tear them up uh, cut them up and turn them into rugs and bed covers and that tradition still continues they still make them by hand here in the villages this is a really well-known restaurant, beautiful views of the valley. And what we're eating are two dishes that are really typical to the region. I'm having the plato al pujareño, which is uh, effectively a, a mix of different things from the region. We've got blood sauces, chorizo. I've got uh, a rib here. Of course, uh, patatas a lo pobre. Yoli has migas. You'll see migas all around the central part of Spain, but also here in the south. And it's pieces of little breadcrumbs, effectively chunks of bread fried up with garlic, oil, pork belly, also pepper. And then what's fascinating, it's also served with melon. So it adds a kind of a freshness and a sweetness. Any luck so far? No luck so far. But I'm confident. Right. You're always confident like that, aren't you? Confident. Yeah. We have a chestnut festival to get to. It starts in 45 minutes. It's a car coming, maybe they will. They're turning, ah, oh, they're turning the wrong way. Shame. Bye. 
so we're walking between villages for the chestnut festival um, we hitchhiked from the bottom village to the middle village now we're walking to the third village confusing i know so it's roasting chestnuts and drinking anise which is an aniseed liqueur sounds good sounds delicious sounds culturally interesting <laughs> and alcoholic and alcoholic so we were just wandering up to the chestnut festival and we saw a little sign that said tavern taverna and jamones ham so i thought that looks interesting we're in the middle of two villages and we stumbled into juan's little bar here he's got a bar he's a secadero de jamones so he he cures his own ham uh, you can see them hanging up behind me and he's got a tavern and so we stumbled in and here we were with juan and two other guests and we sat and drank costa wine which is a wine that i'd read about in driving over lemons that that chris stewart book that is very famous about this region in Granada about living in this region. I'd read about the Costa wine. I didn't realize that it was almost rosé colored and it's this traditional wine served in a little chato glass, not served in a wine glass and straight from the bottle, no label and just a wonderful little experience just stumbling into this little place. That's what I love about this country and I'm in love with the Apujarras already. So we got our anise, yeah. aniseed, which I actually don't really like, sweet Spanish aniseed or anise, but I quite like this one, mm. which worries me. I think as I get older, I might like it more, which I'm about, to, I'm, like a, I'm about to turn 40, so God knows what I'll be drinking <laughs> when I'm 50. There was a land rush on the chestnuts, so we got two, two. one each. Yeah. We'll go we for more. Eggs. We were hopeful. We were hopeful, but we got so now we're going to peel our chestnuts and down the hatch. Sweet. Yeah. Warm and smoky. Tastes like chicken. No, not really. I think I'm going to go and get more of it. It's a bit of a fight for yeah. the for the chestnuts. Yeah. Yes, take two, and we actually got four. It was a land rush. Next time is gonna be eight. It was out of control. People came from everywhere, but we got four chestnuts. So I'm over the I'm over the chestnuts. And we've gotten a little further away from the the noise of the chestnut, right? The noise. Yeah, it was pretty loud. In it there. was pretty loud. It was pretty <laughs> intense. The land rush of the chestnuts. Uh, we've come to this little lookout where we can look over the valley, um, the Pocaida Valley, which is the name of the valley, uh, and the different villages around us, the white villages. The mist has rolled in now. Sometimes through that gap in the mountains, you can see, uh, you can right see there. right there, you can <laughs> see the mountains of the north in the north of Africa and nor mm. northern Morocco. Uh, but now the mist has rolled in and. It feels later than it is. It's only seven o'clock, so we have three hours to kill before Spanish dinner time. And to be honest, what are we going to do? Drink. So we were supposed to stop at Juan's uh, little bar on the road last night for just one wine. Um, and we wound up having a few too many glasses of Costa. Uh, the only consolation I can give myself is that those glasses are very small and I've been trying to do the equation this morning to figure out how many small thimbles of wine there are, of those small thimbles of wine there are per 
real wine glass. Uh, I think I've convinced myself I only had two glasses of wine last night. But anyway, we didn't make dinner. We wound up talking to another couple there. And I just wanted to say that if you're ever in this area, do stop by that place. It's a very unique little um, spot on the side of the road. Every time we go in there, there's Juan waiting with his hams behind him and his his, his uh, labelless Costa wine. There's always another couple in there that you can get chatting to. Um, and it's almost like something, a, a bar out of a David Lynch film. And you just kind of walk in and the guy's behind the bar. There's no one else in there or there's another couple. And you just strike up a conversation and you drink too much wine and you eat a lot of ham. And that's kind of wonderful. So anyway, uh, coffee had, hangover cured, uh, went for a jog. And now we're going to hit the road and discover more of the Alpujarras. So we've been spending so much time in beautiful villages, we've decided to visit a scary, abandoned, weird one. Uh, we're heading on the road to Cebadilla, which is an abandoned village, uh, and it's a very <laughs> it's a very hairy road. Uh, I hope we're not going to fall off the edge, but Yoli's a very safe driver. So this abandoned village, Tebadilla, tucked in the valley, was built in the 1950s, which is why the houses aren't actually very attractive. But it was built here for workers and their families who were working at the hydroelectric plant here. Just so difficult to access this place. So apparently a mule would be driven up once every couple of days with, uh, with supplies, bread, milk, and things like that. But over time, it just got too hard, the access here to, to come and go for people. And so people started to leave. And as I said, at the height, there was 200 families. There was a school, a church, the whole community. Uh, but now it's completely abandoned uh, and just kind of spooky to walk around. <laughs> okay, shall I go in? What do you think? Should we buy it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, where are we, Yoli? Trevelis. Trevelis. So this is one of the highest villages in Spain, uh, here in the Alpujarras, and it's famous for its ham, for its its ham that's cured in this unique environment, which is a lot, a lot of elevation, very high. So we're here in this bar, couldn't get a table, it's heaving in there, so we're at the bar where we like it, and we've ordered some food, and of course we're drinking local wine, which, uh, depending on my mood, tastes rough or not rough, or... How's the sign? Uh, a little rough, a little rough, but I think we might have over-ordered. Yoli's feeling a little weak in the stomach, uh, so ordered a salad, a tropical salad. I'm not sure if it's indigenous to this area uh, of inland Granada, with the kiwi fruit, melon, and oranges, but who knows. But what I got is uh, trout, grilled trout with ham on the top, which is typical of this region, of this, of this village. So it's trout from the rivers here, uh, and then they serve it with ham on top. It's really good. Huh? I've had it once before in Madrid. The trout has an almost like salmon -y quality to it. It's really, yeah. really tasty. And the, and the ham with that saltiness mm -hmm. and also warmth in the grill. Ham and trout. I'm right. a fan. Yeah. Don't know about the tropical salad though. We're just about to leave Trevelez and we stumbled to the shop called Al Andalus, which is ham heaven. They're all hanging up here from the from the ceiling. They've got a secadero where they're, where they're curing and drying the hams out back. I think I just hit the ham mother load. Uh, I'm here in the secadero, the, the, the place where they dry and cure the hams here in the same shop. Uh, and it reminds me of the line, the witch in the wardrobe. You know how they go through the wardrobe and they push all the coats out of the way and wind up in a, in a magical other world. I mean, I just want to walk through these hams, push them out of the way and see where I wind up. So not content with one abandoned settlement, uh, we've left the car by the side of a road, by the side of the road, to head into the bush, down the mountain, to find La Mezquita, the mosque, which is it's listed in Google. Mosque. It's not a mosque, as we've been told, or it may have been a mosque. It's listed in Google, off the road, 10, 15 minutes. They warn us it's not uh, signposted, but it's an old uh, medieval Mozarabe settlement, or the remains of one that a, that, a, that a farm has been built on top of. Not quite sure where we're going or what we'll find, but hey, the journey's, uh, what's the, how's the saying go? Hey. 
So we realized we took the wrong road uh, and we're a little south of the Mezquita. So we have to climb the hill. Uh, we're going by Google now. Um, and then it should be easy to get back because we'll take the right road back, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bien. There it is, just up there. So we came for the Mozarabe settlement, but we'll stay for the views. My God, when we just got up here onto this, this kind of flat area at the top of the cliff, uh, it's gorgeous. You can see why they built a settlement here with these incredible views. Great defensively, obviously. Uh, you can just see everything around us through the gorge. Uh, look at that light. And we've gotten here just as the light is, just as the light is hitting the hills. And we can see all the villages. Um, wow, it's beautiful. It's breathtaking. So much of what you can see, what we can see is actually from a 19th century farm that was built on top of the, the, the medieval settlement. I'm a history buff and I just love being in places like this. They're, they're magical. So we found the easier path out, the one we should have taken to get in, much easier. Uh, we made it hard for ourselves, but also memorable, I guess. And just being in that place, uh, it kind of pulled together everything that I'm finding fascinating and I think we're loving about the Alpujarras, you know, uh, yeah, all the people that have called these mountains home over the century, over centuries, over the millennia. Um, the culture, the mix of cultures here from all those inhabitants. Uh, the landscape, the fascinating, beautiful, rugged, uh, at times hostile landscape, uh, at times beautiful landscape. Um, it just creates this place that's, that's magical. I remember reading an article, I think it was in The Guardian about three or four years ago, and I think it was actually a paid piece and it was about some tours you could do in the Alpujarras or something like that. And it talks about the magic of this area. And I think that's what we feel. Uh, it's just a magical place to visit. It's full of, full of mystery. It's a place you want to explore and know more about. Just, but also just know you can never know everything. There's always just another layer uh, to discover. So that's a dead end. Can't go that way. Oh. Lost again. <laughs> Salud de Bubion. Salud Bubion. Salud, 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 Bubion. Sal